Can you hear me now? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, I can hear you now. Cool, cool. Um, I had to restart it for some reason, but anyway, I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, things like this happen. Tech, tech issues. Uh, demo gods are not with us today, so no, no worries. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, I'm not sure how much uh, you heard or you didn't hear, but uh, uh, welcome everyone. Really excited for today's uh, today's space. And this is our eighth one, I think eighth. Not no, it is our tenth one. So I'm really, really excited for this one. Today we have Safi joining with us. Safi, I believe I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. So thank you for thanks for having cool, me. Cool, cool. Yeah, thanks a lot for joining. And today we're going to talk about open source best practices, and we're going to learn from um, Safi's experiences. So as a reminder, you know, if you are joining late or if you missed out on something, it is being recorded, and uh, I'll upload it on my YouTube channel as well using Audio Labs. So shout out them. and uh, you can also request to be a speaker if you have any questions related to career or you know about infrastructure as code and things like that open source for example and um, hopefully yeah we'll have a fun discussion and uh, you can request to be a speaker or if you don't want to be a speaker but still have questions you can check out the pin tweet and you can send in your questions over there i'll read those out loud and you can ask your questions to Safi over there and uh, do check out go firefly io as well on twitter give them a follow and i've done a video on it already so um go check it out for open uh, for, for some infrastructure code best practices but yeah let's get started safi would you like to um, oh one more thing i missed out we'll give you some swag as well <laughs> folks who ask good questions will send out some swag as we do always in every story space but yeah, before we get started with the agenda um, safi would you like to tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself Yes, sure. So, thank you for having me. I'm Sefi Ganis, CTO and co-founder at Firefly. Uh, I used to work in a, a, a. We established Firefly one and a half year ago, and basically, uh, before Firefly, I served in the Israeli military in Unit Eight Two Hundred, and I worked in few startup companies. Don't know if you heard about Dom Nine, but uh, I worked as one of the first engineers at uh, Dom Nine Security. And we built there the first CSPM. So the company was acquired by Checkpoint at uh, 2018, and I stayed one year after the acquisition to lead the the back back background the uh, backend infrastructure of the company. And after Dom Nine, I started to work as VV engineering at an Israeli cyber uh, startup, and then we established Firefly. Amazing! Well, thanks a lot for sharing, and looking forward to learning more about you know your experiences. Um, what made you you know decide? What made you decide that you wanted to start, let's say, Firefly? Or can you maybe share your experiences as a founder? And uh, like in the first place, what made you realize that there's like a need for a company like this, and what it does? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. So when I used to work at Dom Nine. I worked with companies like AT and T and Citibank, and I saw massive cloud footprint. Okay, and as I mentioned, Dom Nine was a cloud security platform that uh, uh, comply AWS, Azure, GCP with the uh, uh, CIS benchmark, PCI, and etc. So there, I saw that AT and T, for example, that they have hundreds of AWS accounts, and I couldn't understand how they manage it, manage it how they can control. This amount of AWS account and this clutter, and then I started to realize that there is a, a real issues regarding a cloud complexity. Amazing! Well, thanks a lot for sharing. And uh, can you can you talk a little bit more about as a founder, like how you found out? You know, most often often times folks ask me, you know. uh what is it about founders like how do they start a company do they first look for like a problem statement or do they first look for like an idea or how how does that go yes yeah, so it was tough i can tell you that uh, we started with uh, an ideation process and i, I looked i always knew that the uh, infrastructure as code is is good and there are many problems there but i couldn't really understand the the deeper problem regarding the infrastructure as code So that's why we started the validation process. And validation process means that you think that uh, you build something minimal, like an MVP, and you start talking with uh, some prospects, and you want to hear their ideas. Uh, by the way, I read uh, the I read the MAM test 
a book. It's a really nice, uh, nice book that uh, t- teach me how to ask the questions without bias. So uh, using that, I, I, I could uh, ask people and understand that they, they, their answers are not biased. And we understood, we understood that uh, cloud complexity is a real issue. And we started, we, we established the company. Amazing, and thanks, thanks for sharing about that. Um, I think that's you know for most of the startup founders I've like collaborated uh, co- collaborated with and like uh, had a discussion with, uh, say sort of like the you know the same thing. They find a problem, find a challenge, and I, I you know it's it's also that they uh, they work at a different company and over there they find a problem and then they start a start a new company to solve that problem, uh, which is pretty interesting. Cool. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about Firefly? Like, who is it targeted towards, and like, who can start using it? Are there any like specifically pro- specific providers that you integrate with? Yeah. So so okay. So I'll explain about Firefly, and after that, I'll explain about the integration. So Firefly is a cloud asset management solution powered by infrastructure as code. Basically, we scan the entire cloud footprint, such as AWS, Kubernetes, GCP and other SaaS providers like uh, Akamai, Okta, GitHub, New Relic, and et cetera. So basically we scan everything and we automatically codify everything to code like Terraform, Helm charts for Kubernetes, and et cetera. So on top of our technology, we detect drifts between the cloud and the ISC, the disparity between the cloud and the ISC. And of course that we notify immediately after detecting drifts. And we also built a policy engine based on OPA, Open Policy Engine, that uh, helps uh, our the DevOps teams to govern the cloud by creating C- uh, uh, FinOps, SecOps, and SRE insights. Amazing. And folks, if you want to learn more about Firefly, I've done a, a video on it already, so make sure you, you check it out. Um, but, but, you know, folks who are joining us live, uh, it'd be great if you can also, you know, join in, send in your questions. We have one over here as well. Um, Shubhadeep is asking, what is the biggest advantage of open source software? Can, can you elaborate, please? Um, that's the, that's the question. That's what they have sent. Shubhadeep, would you like to come on stage uh, and ask your question? So, you sorry. Sorry. Send... <laughs> Yes, sorry, I didn't realize. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, the the question is, what is the biggest advantage of open source software? What is the biggest advantage of open source software? I see. So basically, I can tell you that there are more than one advantage. And basically, uh, we built Valid IAC, and soon I, I will also elaborate about it. But I needed to choose uh, open source tools uh, for uh, uh, for a valid IC for the uh, open source tool that we created, and it was tough for me to un- to choose the uh, most relevant open source tools because I saw that some of those open source tools that they don't have much stars or that uh, they're a uh, last commit was like three years ago. And of course it, it's not uh, so, uh, it, it's not updated and we should not use something like that. And uh, choosing open source tool, also I need to understand that uh, uh, the, the re- save on major and minus uh, release, uh, that they don't uh, bre- uh, that they save on backward compat- compatibility and they save on a, a on this. And uh, one more thing that was important for me while choosing open source, and it's related to the advantage and, uh, uh, of, of uh, choosing open source tool is uh, the license. For example, I'm choosing an open source tool by, uh, uh, if it's Apache 2, that I know that it's uh, it's open for all and it's it's fine for me to use it. Thanks for sharing, Sophia. I believe I, uh, that answers the question, Shivati. You you mentioned about you know uh, open policy agent. Are there any other open source tools that you use in Violet IAC, for example? Because I know that's also um, you know uh, the, the, a tool by Go Go Firefly, and uh, uh, maybe you can share a little bit more about it, like how Violet IAC um, 
maintains the open source uh, like standards and best practices and what other tools are you using to make that happen open source tools yeah so i i, I will I'll start to explain basic what is valid ic and after that i will explain what uh, what open source tool we choose so as I mentioned before, Valid IAC is an open source tool that I created a few months ago in Firefly that uh, uh, validates, validates best practices uh, for infrastructure as code. So uh, we took four different open source for security, cost, lint, and map. And using Valid IAC, uh, you can get, you can take all your infrastructure as code uh, uh, configuration and uh, run the valid IC checker uh, on top of this. So uh, that's related uh, to uh, valid IC. And what was the second question? And how is it about, you know, uh, it, but I have a follow up one on that. So we were talking about Firefly and now you have this nice little open source project uh, like valid IC, uh, which you shared about. What, what was the motivation behind that? Yeah, what was, can you repeat this? What was, yeah, yeah, what was the motivation behind that? Like, what led you to motivation. Build, uh, valid, yeah, valid IAC? I see. What, what was the motivation uh, to build valid IAC? So, f first of all, I saw my customers struggle with best practices. I saw security groups that are open to the entire world. I saw S3 buckets that uh, uh, also expose, or uh, that's from security purposes from FinOps, for example, EBS volumes that are unattached or a, a other EBS volumes with high IOPS uh, configuration. So I understood that there are pains regarding best practices and uh, I didn't see any open source tool that combines all of those checkers in one place, a one-stop shop to, to rule all of uh, uh, those checkers. By the way, uh, Valid IC is a, a we fork Valid Cube that uh, was created by Commodore. Valid Cube is a great open source tool that basically uh, validates uh, uh, best practices for Kubernetes. And we realized that their community, they have something really nice, but why the infrastructure is called community? Why don't we have a tool like that? And that's why I decided to fork Valid Cube and uh, take it and uh, to uh, to help the community with that. And one more thing is that um, I saw a technical skill and, and explain, elaborate about it. I'm a developer. I know Python. I know Golang, JavaScript, and etc. And Terraform is different. Terraform is the difference between declarative language and imperative. So, for example, when I studied Terraform, it was tough. It was not so easy. And I'm pretty sure that other people struggled with with the best practices in the infrastructure as code. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Sevi. Huh? Yeah, hi, Kunal. So, yeah. So, I have a question like, uh, is there an example of open source software that are uh, designed to make it very easy to recreate, maintain, and repair uh, and modify by its user? So, it will be very helpful. Sure. Yes, sure. And I'll give you an example for the open source tool that we adapted yeah. in Valid IC. So basically, yes, we, we looked for, I can tell you that there are a, ver a huge variety of open source tools out there for uh, infrastructure as code. And we took TFSEC uh, for security. TFSEC is a great open source tool that was created by Aqua. Uh, and TFSEC, basically the static code analysis that uh, validates, uh, finds security vulnerabilities for infrastructure as code. I choose, by the way, uh, TFSEC because of the stars, because I saw that the community uh, uh, contribute to this, that they open issues and yeah, and people use this. Yeah, uh, yeah. just one more question that uh, if you use like, uh free or open source software, do we make it a financial payment to the developer for any of it? I mean, for that. Can you elaborate if I'm paying, if I'm paying for, for the custom? Uh, no, you if you use, uh, yeah, yeah, if you use the open source software, do we make a financial payment to the developer for it, uh, for the software? No, the open source is for free. It's for free and 
you can it basically in valid IC we have the browser based uh, solution you just you can just go there run anything you you want and it's free and we don't pay amazing and it's also folks from like you mentioned um the the commodore stool and i have a follow up question on that you mentioned that it utilizes various other open source projects and there's this question by manthan as well um how do you how do you choose like for a particular uh, problem scenario there may be various tools available so how does one choose a particular open source um you know project for their own projects so example you had to pick like three or something <laughs> how did you choose the best of the breed ah it's a great question so as i mentioned before choosing go open source tool is is tough because you, you need to there is no one answer for that so basically i looked for the stars i wanted to make sure that uh, the git repository uh, with uh, more than uh, hundreds of stars and i looked for the last commit as i mentioned before the, i wanted to see that uh, the the community uh, still uh, write code and still uh, maintain this open source and the license is really it's important because without a proper license i won't be able to use this open source tool and one more thing that it's really it's a nice story regarding the history of open source so most of you heard about elastic search and about uh, terraform in both cases they decided to change the license uh, the license or the code itself and i'll give you some examples in elastic search uh, in elastic 7 they decided to change the license from apache to something else and all the cloud providers and especially aws that they a uh, fork they used elastic search to create a, a dedicated managed service so they couldn't go on because uh, they they couldn't get the new feature of elastic and that's why aws fork elastic 7 and now they maintain something called open search and the second uh, exp- uh, example is regarding terraform maybe you heard about terra grant or pulumi both of them used terraform they import the go code inside their code but one year ago terraform decided to change everything and they took all the public package and moved into private uh, 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 into private code internal folder so all of so everyone who used terraform needs to uh, fork the terraform uh, open source and maintain a, a side branch so that's why when we choose an open source tool we need to to research about the community and to understand the history of this tool uh, a quick uh, question sophie um uh, like uh, when we say iic so will it, will be uh, will it be able to uh, consolidate the existing infrastructure already available on the cloud to consolidate the infrastructure on the cloud you, you are talking about farfetch or, or talking about um it for example let's say um we have existing infrastructure already which is not created with terraform um when we use firefly uh, you know to deploy new new resources um whether the state file will get import existing infrastructure which is uh, i mean from the client's infrastructure or um do we need to you know manually import it explicitly i see great so when you use firefly as i mentioned before we build the cloud asset management solution that mm-hmm. scan the entire the entire cloud footprint and scan the infrastructure's code so basically we automatically scan all the terraform states from s3 buckets and using that we compare the disk and we find the disparity between the cloud and the iac so everything everything we do is automatically and we check drifts and we find the, those resources that were created by code what we call them uh, codified we find the resources that uh, you created uh, with clickops in the cloud and you don't have any terraform behind and we call it uh, clickops of course mm-hmm. we f- we find drift the disparity between the cloud and the ic and by the way drift are dangerous and they can cause service failures and downtime and etc mm-hmm. and the last thing that uh, w- we find is what we call it ghost ghost 
is resource that you used to deploy using Terraform, but somebody in the real world in the cloud removed it. Okay. Okay. Believe that uh, answered the question. That was a good question. Thanks a lot for sharing. Um, about, uh, speaking of drifts, there's one question by Siddharth. What causes drifts and ghost assets in infrastructure, and how can valid ISC be useful to avoid these? Hey, how can valid ISC what? Sorry. How can valid ISC be useful to avoid these? Or... Be useful. Yeah. I see. I see. Great. So I, I, I'll explain about basically I'll explain about drifts and about Firefly, and after that I'll elaborate about valid ISC. So drifts. Imagine that you are a DevOps engineer and you deploying a Lambda function in Terraform and somebody changed the configuration without changing the code. So this is basically a, a drift. So using Firefly, we detect drifts automatically and get notification to Slack, PagerDuty, and et cetera. And um, we also have the ability to fix the drift with creating pull requests to your Git repository, to the relevant Git repository. And it's huge. It's really awesome. Valid IAC, it's an open source tool. It's not detecting any drift, but Valid IAC will be able to show you that your code is a, a, a wrote with best practices. That, for example, your code is a, a well configured for security, cost, lint, and, uh, and basically map. And if, for example, you create a security group that is open to the entire world, or you create a resource that is very expensive, so using Valid IC, you will be able to see all of those issues before basically deploy them. So everything is connected because Firefly is a SaaS solution that gov to govern the cloud and, and uh, uh, control cloud complexity. And Valid IC is the best practices for infrastructure as code. So we involve between them and it's nice. Amazing, I believe that answers the question. Thanks a lot for sharing. And since we're talking about Firefly and we're talking about the drifts and how it's gonna help, um, can you maybe share a little bit more about how it works? Because how are you comparing the, the ISC with the cloud basically is the question. Okay, it's a, it's a wonderful question. So basically we scan the entire cloud footprint. Our customer, let's, let's, let's talk about AWS, for example. Our customers create an IAM role with third party permission and the policy attached with read only configuration only. So Firefly can read only configuration and metadata, but we are not able to see data inside your buckets, for example. I know which RDS cluster you have, but I don't have any access to the back, to the RDS. So wh what we do, we scan the entire cloud footprint, the EC2, IAM, RDS, Lambda, and et cetera. And we scan all of those Terraform states or Pulumi or Helm chart or your infrastructure's code. And Firefly compare between the ISC and the cloud and using that, we find the drifts, the ghosts, the codified resources, and the unmanaged. Amazing, and thanks a lot for sharing, Sefi. Um, you mentioned about customers. So when folks start using Firefly or Valid ISE, what are some of the main the key highlights that you see You know, they work with when, you, when they're using these tools? And what should folks look forward to like when they start out after the storage space? It's a, it's a wonderful question. So basically, I elaborate about what I see that my customers do in Firefly. So first of all, they use the product to govern the cloud and reduce the cloud complexity. Okay. But we work with a few kinds of companies. We work with small startups. We work with unicorns. And we also work with enterprises and a Fortune 100. Each, customers, each, each customer has different pains. So if we take a look at those uh, startup companies, they usually don't have infrastructure as code or just a small amount of infrastructure as code. So they use Firefly to codify everything into their module. So they, they pick their S3 bucket and the lambdas and et cetera and build modules and 
after they're building the models, they use Firefly to codify everything that uh, is related to the model that th they just created. But if we talk about unicorns, for example, so they have infrastructure as code, but they are trying to govern their IAC with best practices. So basically they usually use our policy engine. They want Firefly to help them with FinOps, SecOps, and SRE. So they write up a rule and they use our out of the box rules to govern the cloud, to understand uh, which resources are clutter and should be deleted and to, uh, uh, to save money by uh, our FinOps insights. And they get an notification automatically to their Slack usually. And if we talk about enterprise and especially Fortune 100 companies, so they have a really complex cloud. I saw companies with thousands, with hundreds of AWS accounts, GCP, GCP, and Kubernetes clusters, and they use Firefly first of all for visibility. They can't, they don't have one place that rule all their infrastructure. So Firefly helps them to understand which resources are codified, managed, unmanaged drifts and ghosts. And after that, they use our drift detection and they use our IAC visibility and it's, it's essential today. Amazing, thanks for sharing. And this is one of the challenge with, when you talk about dynamic infrastructure, right? The, the configuration drift. So whenever, you know, I, I had I had a Twitter space with Pulumi as well. And over there, Rockwood and uh, Sid, they were also talking about drifts and how that's like one of the biggest challenges. Um, cool. Well, uh, those are all, let me just check if we list, if we missed out on anything. Um, one second. I think, uh, I think we are, uh, there's one question around, around security. Um, so how, when it comes to security processes, how do you assess that when it comes to infrastructure code and does Firefly provide anything um, related to it? So just to elaborate how we secure our inf our customers' infrastructure as code, that's the question? Yeah, the security aspect of infrastructure as code. I see, great. So basically, yeah, I, 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 as I mentioned before, I was one of the first engineers at Dom9 Security, and I, I basically built a CSPM. So I love security, and that's why I decided to build something bigger than just in security. But in Firefly, you can, uh, we find drifts, okay? Drifts can make you a security hazard. For example, if you create a security group, but somebody changed uh, uh, the inbound rule uh, to be open to the entire world. So of course that it's a security hazard, but we also provide our policy engine. So you can detect S3 bucket with the misconfiguration, the ACL or you can find EBS volumes are, that are not encrypted, or we can find a, a KMS keys without rotation. It's also important. And I, I can see many companies that configured IAM users, but they forgot to configure the multi-factor authentication. And this is also something the Firefly find. And all of those examples, they basically are configur configurable. So our customers create their own uh, insights using Firefly, and uh, we help them to govern the cloud security. Amazing, that answers my question. Thanks for sharing. There's one last question by Shubhadeep, which is, like, for example, you're using a lot of open source projects in your own like uh, like project. Uh, do you can you recall like any of the risks associated with open source software? Can you repeat any, it, sorry? Any risks of open source software that you've used? Any, the, I, I risk, 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 risk yeah. Any risk yeah. of open source, yes, sure. Uh, so basically, uh, it's really, as I mentioned before, when we choose an open source tool, we need to, to find the best practices uh, for, for choosing it. I mean, uh, the last commit is something that we should consider because if we see that this open source tool was last uh, committed a few months ago, so maybe they used a third party open source there that they are deprecated or with vulnerabilities. So 
we always need to maintain open source. So amount of stars and uh, and uh, the last commit and the, uh, to to make sure that our open source is major and minor are really essential for choosing an open source tool. And I can tell you that uh, one more risk that I see uh, is that uh, people put open source tool inside their CI CD. And uh, that's why th that's something that Valid IC is trying also to solve because we always maintain this open source and we always upgrade the um, uh, TFSEC, TFLint, InfraSec, and InframEP. So if you just use Valid IC, so we promise you that you get the latest versions. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. Um, and uh, yeah, I believe those are the questions I uh, questions we had. Um, really great talking to you, Sefi, and thanks a lot for for joining us. Um, folks, uh, check out uh, Valid IC, check out Go Firefly, and I've made videos on both. So if you want to get started, you know, get up and running very fast, you can uh, check out the tutorials I have done. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can send those on the socials or you can join the, the community as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much about it. Do you have any closing remarks, Sefi, before we wrap this up? No, I think so. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, for joining us. And by the way, if somebody uh, uh, starts using Firefly right now using this uh, podcast, so you will be able to get 20% off the product. And I'd love uh, to help as, uh, as much as I can with technical questions. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for sh thanks for sharing. And um, we'll announce the giveaway winner soon on, on the on, on Twitter. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And it's being recorded so you can watch it later on in case you missed it. And yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And we will see you in the next one. Once again, thanks, Seppi, for giving your time. It was lovely talking to you. Thanks for answering all the questions. And yeah, see you everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.